So you book an appointment. Mm -hmm. And so this is the section on selling system. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you get the client's house, right? And yep. you're, you're asking, what do I do now? <laughs> okay. So this is what you do now. You go through this seven step process, right? So the first part of your appointment is getting to know the client, okay? So you're implementing the sales submarine process and you're getting to know the client's called bond rapport, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Second step is you do the upfront contract and this is where you tell them what's going to happen from here on out and that they're in control. So the whole idea of the upfront contract is to make sure that they know that they're in control, but you're really in control because you're the one asking questions. So remember, you're freaking out about them gonna ask you questions. It's like, you're the one in control. You're the one asking questions, right? So mm -hmm. you are in control. You got the whole process. By the way, let me just say this. They don't have a life insurance license, you do. Let me right. tell you the client's product training manual, okay? Let me tell you what the client wants to know. That when they die, they want to know that the policy will pay the benefits to their family. They don't care about how that works. They don't care about every little penny. They don't care about dividend options. They don't care about paid up insurance. They don't care about... They just want to know, when I die, will this pay for my benefits? Okay. And most mm -hmm. of the leads you're running, you're not running IUL leads, Nikki. You're not running mortgage protection leads. You're not running Medicare leads. You're mm -hmm. running final expense leads. Okay. Right. Which means these people want to know that when they die, they'll have enough money, their family to bury them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the product training really... The questions they're they're going to ask are not they're not going to ask, you know, living benefits. They're not going to ask, well, does this have living benefits? Like, for example, okay, they don't they don't ask those questions. <laughs> You're the one asking them questions. Okay, mm -hmm. so remember, so the process is step one: bond rapport. And I know you've been through this, but I'm going to mm -hmm. go over it again. Yeah, so I'm going to watch it again, too. I'm going to do it again, too. Just well, to... I mean, look, Mary just started. She Mary has a four-week head start on you, right? Mm -hmm. Mary is going to have a, I don't know if you check Slack, but I post stuff on Slack. She just booked 23 appointments, okay? She spends two hours in the morning on Thursday, this morning, and she spends another three hours um, this evening. Okay, so she only spends, okay, she did three and a half hours. She booked 23 appointments. She's going to get commissioned on appointments that she closed last weekend, $8,800. She works full-time for me. She is my full-time recruiter. And do you know we are the number one agency in the entire alliance with over 90 recruits so far this year. The next person, the next person on the recruiting leaderboard has only less than 40 or like 42, 43. In other words, we've lapped them twice, the second place person. Mary mm -hmm. is my chief recruiter. She's literally the reason we have that many recruits. Okay. So she works like more than 40 hours for me. Mm -hmm. So I just want to. Make sure everyone understands that she's only been doing it four weeks, five weeks. I think she's going on her fifth week. She's been averaging about a couple thousand every weekend. So she spends three to four hours on Thursday, two in the morning, and whatever she can do after she works for me on Thursday, she books Friday and Saturday. And then she has spillover appointments. She'll do one or two Zs. Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday next week. So not, and they're they're lo fairly local. There's <coughs> hour and a half, like Columbus, Ohio, hour 15. 
and then she has leads um, in Butler County, which is you know maybe half hour for her. Okay, so so I just want to kind of tell you that she's mega part time, but she's seriously been averaging. She's already she's at a six figure income run rate on a part time basis. So can it be done? Yes. Is is Mary a, a a grizzled insurance veteran that's been with the Alliance for five years? No, she's only been doing this four and a half weeks, going on five weeks. Okay, so just but Alex, she's what's the, what's the earliest she year. makes her calls? I'm sorry. What is the earliest she starts her calls when she, she starts, starts at eight thirty? See, that's when I go to I go being at work at around that time, and well, we can't. I, I, okay. Yeah, you have your times that you have to do it. Yeah. Okay. I'm just telling you that she's figured out a time that she can do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now she could start at 7 30, right? But she goes to church. She, you know, she has a schedule. She can mm -hmm. dial at 8 30. So she'll dial for a couple of hours. Then she works for me. Okay. The rest of the day until the evening, she knocks off and then starts dialing again. The thing about her, she's just mega focused like mm -hmm. do you think she was scared you betcha she's crazy scared the first time she picked up the phone she texted me almost like every you know after every like few calls okay i booked another one oh i haven't booked anything yet oh it's been an hour I only booked one appointment and then she books five appointments in the next half hour like okay she just does she grinds okay even though she's scared but she still has fear when she picks up the phone. She still dials the phone because she knows that she's only has a couple hours in the morning. Every mm -hmm. minute counts. Now, here's what a lot of agents do. They listen to the recording if it's a TLP lead. They read the lead. If it's a direct mail lead like she runs, they'll look at the lead and they'll go, huh, oh, this client's like 79. Gee, I wonder what I'm going to show a 79-year-old. And the the female sixty eight, huh? They're really old, and they live at one two three Main Street, huh? That's not a very high income area. That's a low income area. I wonder if they're going to be able to, you know what I'm saying? And then mm -hmm. they conjure up this whole. They spend ten minutes reading the lead instead of dialing the phone. In ten minutes, right? You can you can make fifteen dials in ten minutes. Let me tell you, because what mashing the phone is like only three minutes. Like mm -hmm. you could do three dials in about 30 seconds, honestly. But anyway, the here's the point. The point is she doesn't waste time. She might be scared, but she doesn't let fear waste a second. She just gets on the phone. And what you're going to learn, Nikki, is mm -hmm. that the more you dial the phone, the more activity you're going to have happen, the more conversations you're going to have. Okay, so I'm not just talking at you i'm talking to the mm -hmm. entire group on mm -hmm. here because there's a whole bunch of people that when i look at their activity report it's like dude you're like full time but you only dialed 54 times like what is up with that you know so right. so anyway so let's get back to what do you do in the home so you do bond and rapport you create a relationship with the client you show the client that you care about them you learn about the client you learn about what they care about Offer on contract, you basically tell them they're in control. Finding pain, it's finding out what happens, right? When mm -hmm. they get, when they decide to think about it, what will happen when they, when their loved one, when they die tomorrow morning, how is their family going to pay for their funeral? But in decision, this is where you assure them that you're going to fit it in their budget. And the decision step is when you get rid of the think about it, okay? Mm -hmm. then fulfillment is showing them the rates. Now, here's the simple thing about that. We really only taught you royal royal neighbors. Real reason why is royal neighbors has the full benefit whole life, the greater benefit whole life, and the guaranteed issue whole life. So regardless of the problems, the health problems, you have a product that you can show them rates, okay? So that's the fulfillment. You show them rates, they pick a rate. The post sale is you're locking that sale down, making sure they can afford it. You're re-asking them, okay, Joan Mary, this $129, is this going to fit in your budget? Okay. So 
So that is what you do in the home. You do it every time, every time, every time. It doesn't change. The conversations change because the people are different, right? But mm -hmm. the whole process, this process, the whole mindset of the seven-step process, you know, six. Okay, I combine two. So it's really seven, but I combine a bunch of decision. I, the whole purpose is to de determine, and this is going to sound funny to you, it's not to determine if you can sell them. It's to determine if they are a real client or not. Any point here where you get the feeling like this is this is not the right client that deserves my time, you get up and leave. You don't even give them a card. You say, listen, I I don't think this is going to really work out for you. It doesn't seem like you're really serious. Tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and, and leave. You have my number because I'm sure it's on your caller ID. If you decide that you're serious about taking care of your family, please give me a call. But I've got some other families to take care of. And you leave. Now, does that sound like a sales system? Absolutely, because it's an mm -hmm. anti-sales system. Mm -hmm. You're not there to beg a client for a check. Please, oh my God, Colin, Mr. Client, I got to pay my bills and I need for you to buy this policy so I can pay more my bills. You're not a beggar. You're not begging for a sale. You, this whole time you're asking questions and you're measuring if the client deserves you as a salesperson. Okay. It's a whole different system, isn't it? And that's why you have to be in control asking the questions. Okay. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. So, and here's what I used to do when I first went in the field is I'd have all of these steps on a three by five card to make sure I checked off each process. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the bottom rapport. Okay, let me reshare. So you know, you've got your. Um... Okay, so let's share with sound. Oh, wow. They don't have that. Oh, share sound. Here we go. Okay, so this is the, by the way, this is short enough for us to go over this. So you know you've got your um, um, tent presentation book with the um, you know printed out in color. Okay, let's make it look good. Stuck inside mm -hmm. all the um, the uh, the the cellophane page protectors. Okay. And so as you're going through your book, you know you get to the first slide. You know so the bond report happens when you first are on the phone booking the appointment, right? And then when you get to their door, the bond report continues on. Okay, again, I'm not going to teach the details, but you're taking your shoes off, you're, you know, greeting them with a nice smile, you're playing with their pets if the pets run up to you. Nothing like someone knowing that you love pets. Whether you love them or not, it doesn't matter. You love those pets because it's like you're become a member of their family. I mean, it really works. Bond report starts at the beginning. And then this slide, the initial slide is you're telling them, hey, I just you know, want you to know that, that uh, I'm part of a company called National Agents Alliance. Actually, it's the Alliance. I don't want to go. We're a national. Oh, we are a national alliance of agents. And basically, you're telling them what we do. Mortgage protection, final expense, life insurance, retirement protection. In fact, I'm going to add another thing. Actually, estate planning, too. State planning, <laughs> of course, <laughs> and and that book comes with all of those pages in it. Tax. Yeah, you print it out. It's um, there's a section in the training that printing out okay. the PowerPoint nice. slide. Okay, like this is a PowerPoint. Yeah, we amp it up, baby. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna help you make so much money with us. You know, so that's kind of who we are. Okay, and so Bonner Report here. What you're doing before this is you're asking about their family. Hey, you tell me about your family. It looks like you have kids. You get to know them, right? So tell me, how did you two meet each other? 
you know, with his husband and wife, take them back to that's a great question. You know, all the Bonner report, a lot of that happens before you even open up your presentation. You know, how'd you guys meet? Okay, we had a great discussion the other day on why do I ask that question? It puts the client in the state of when they were dating each other, that romance. So they could have been fighting beforehand, but asking that question. So a lot of my Bonner Report videos have those type of questions in there. Again, I'm not going to go into detail, but all that Bonner Report, that feel good juju happens before you even really open up your ATM. Okay. So Bonner Report doesn't have to have to take half an hour, really a good five, 10 minutes where you ask effective questions and you get them feeling good about you that you really want to help them out. Right. Um, and so you open up, you tell them a little bit about who we are. So you're really orienting them to getting started with the Sandler sales system. So some key questions on the bond report, when you're sitting down with the client, <coughs> I'll go into some detail. The first thing you want to do is you want to put them in, in compliance mode. How do you psychologically put them in compliance mode? You, you get, you get to the table, like you want to control the environment. If the TV's on, say, Hey, Joe and Mary, listen, just so I'm not here three hours, can we shut the TV off, please? And I go and I pick up the remote. Is this the remote here? I'd shut the dadgum TV off. I'd be, I'm really nice. And this after I played with the dogs or petted the cat or whatever. And hey, listen, can we can we go to your kitchen table, please? You don't you don't wait for them to say yes, you go to the kitchen table. Guess what? They're gonna follow you. Okay. And then you sit in the guy's chair in, you know, it's usually at the head of the table. And you, then you direct where they sit. It's like, hey, Joe, can you do me a favor? Can you sit here? If you're a guy, you have the guy sit. And then Mary, can you sit over there right next to him? Okay. So you're facing them. You got your ATM like right here. And we're all watching the ATM together. It's like we're all watching TV together. You don't put the ATM between you and them because the ATM flip chart is like a barrier. So it's like watching TV together. You put it to where all three of us can see the, see the ATM, right? A lot of psychology here. Bond rapport is a lot of psychology. Okay, but before you open it, it's like, oh, man, you... I've been running all day. Can you do me a favor? Is there any way I can get some water? Bam. You put them in compliance mode. You become the guest. They're the host. And when they say, oh, yeah, sure. Do you, do you want bottled? What do you Just bottled water would be great. Thank you so much. I so appreciate it. I've been running all day, right? That's a psychological thing. I can go into transactional analysis. I'm not going to. I've been running all day. Man, it's just... It's been a crazy day. Did you have a good day today? Okay. Here's what I did there. It's the, it is TA. Okay. So I'm not okay. You're okay. When I don't sound like I'm having an awesome day, I don't want to make them feel like they're having a sucky day. The reason why they believe they have a better day than me is because I don't tell them, oh man, I had the most awesome day. I took care of three clients. I made a couple thousand already. I'm so fired up. And I'm going on vacation to Alaska in June. Oh, my gosh. My life is just so awesome. They're going to go like, oh, my gosh. Our lives suck compared to yours. It's transactional analysis. It's the I'm okay. You're okay. When you go not okay, they're, this is Sandler, by the way. He uses TA. When you're not okay, they, be, they feel way better, right? So you're just like, oh, man, what a day. What a day. It's crazy. Can I? It's okay. Can I? Can I bother you for a glass of water? So what they do is they go get the water. They give it to you. It's like, oh, thank you so much. They feel good because they're in host mode. You're the guest, and they gave you a bottle of water. It's like, oh man. So I'm sipping. I'm drinking. Okay. Now if they say, hey, do you want a beer? It's like, oh man, I would love one, but I'm working right now. Maybe some other time. Right. Here's the other key to bond rapport. Never refuse except for beer. Okay. If they say, hey, you know, we just made a batch of kimchi. Would you like some? Absolutely. 
I don't care if you hate kimchi, you've never had it. it doesn't mean you have to eat it. Try a little bit. Oh, wow, this is this is really good stuff. Have you made kimchi long? Never refuse. Accept everything except for beer or alcohol. Just and, you know, in a nice way. Now, most of the time they won't do that. Hey, we just had dessert. Would you like some apple pie? No, seriously, I never turn apple pie down. Okay. So it's like, yeah, can you bring the whole pie, please? <laughs> but, you know, by the time they do that, I'm tight, man. I am tight with them. So never refuse anything because you don't want to be in refuse mode because you don't want to put them in refuse mode. You're putting them psychologically in compliance mode. Okay. You want them to comply to all your questions. So when you ask for water, now you might think, oh, that doesn't make a difference. Bet me. I was like the number four producer in the alliance. Bet me that doesn't make a difference. Makes a huge difference. I don't think I've actually taught this in years. The finer details of bond rapport. So you accept. Okay. Now it's like, wow. So let me ask you guys, like, and you're pulling out your ATM, you're pulling out your computer, you're pulling everything out because you are setting up shop. What you're telling them psychologically is we're doing business tonight. We are going to get stuff done. I'm going to protect you. you. All your body language is we're doing business, man. I'm here to do business. I'm here to protect you. It's called assumptive. You're totally assumptive, right? You pull everything out and you're like, so bon rapport, right? You ask them questions. It's like, hey, how long y'all been married? Oh, we've been married 26 years. Wow. <laughs> That's a really long time. Wow. What, what's the secret for such a long marriage? Okay. This is all to set up the next question. Oh, well, we just, we love hanging out each other, blah, blah, blah. It's like, man, I've only been married, you know, well, I've been married 34 years. No, this is 2024, 33 years. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, 33 years because Jesus died at, when he was 33. So that's kind of how I remember it this year. Anyway, wow, that's, what's the secret? Well, you know, now here's the thing. The next question is the most vital question. Well, well, tell me, how did you guys meet each other? Okay, so psychologically, this is what your objective is. They may have been fighting all night before you showed up. She might be pissed off. He's pissed off. They had a fight. Psychologically, what you're doing is you're taking them back to, take me back to when you first met each other. Tell me about that story. What was it like? And so what you do is you get them thinking about when they fell in love with each other, the funny stories like, yeah, you know, I, I was at a bachelor's party and we were out at the bar and she was like sitting there and she wasn't, she was with a couple friends. I thought, what the heck, man, she's been staring at me. And I thought I'd, you know, you know, placate her interest by going up and, you know, um, you know, giving her the pleasure of my company. Okay. But that's definitely something I would say. Jeannie would laugh. And then and I, and then I turned to the wife and go, okay, Mary, seriously, that's what happened. She go, oh, no way. I was sitting there minding my own business. And this guy comes up to me and he starts doing these crazy lines. Well, you got to tell me, what line did he use on you? Well, he asked me what my sign was, my Zodiac sign. Oh, my gosh, you're kidding me. He used that old line. I'm going, Joe, seriously? You are not more creative. Do you think I've done this a thousand times? I have. And some of the stories are hilarious. And I enjoy finding out. Here's what happens. You mentally and emotionally put them back 24 years ago when they met each other. And they remembered why they love each other. They remembered why they got together. They remembered all those things. What you're doing psychologically is putting him in a state of love. Does that make sense? This is one of the, I tell you yeah, what. it does. I close sales when I walk in the house, baby. That's how I close. So anyway, there now you got some good juju going. It's like, wow. Then you share about yourself. Well, you know, I've been married like 
33, 33 years. I don't remember. Jesus died at 33. 33 years. And like I'm staring. The reason I'm looking off this way is because that's what I'm. So I've been married 33 years. And um, actually, my wife and I, we met in community theater. We were in this um, musical show. Um, and I, actually, it was uh, this 1944 USO show. And so I showed up to rehearsal, and this really cute girl in a big baggy shirt. And that's where I met her. And it was in the basement of this community theater. And it was like, huh, she's kind of cute. You know, and I knew she was like eyeing me, and I could tell that she was like digging me. <laughs> she just she just laughed. Sure. <laughs> and she I don't know if you heard that in the background. Anyway, so I thought I'd grace her with my presence. And I went up to her to say, Hey, my name's Alex. What's yours? No, anyway. So I share them. That was your first that was your first sale. Yeah, that was my first sale, my most important <laughs> sale. So they laugh at my story. Guess what, man? We we got this juju going on. It is like you can feel it too. And this is what you're looking for. You it's a feeling that this is going to be a really great relationship with this couple, right? Now, here's what happens. <coughs> So again, Sandler technique. The wife's like this. And the husband's like this. So you know there's something not right. So if you, the uh, Sandler rule is if you feel it, say it. If you feel there's something funky going on, call it out. It's called, you got to get rid of the mutual mystification. Mutual mystification. I don't know if you guys watch that Sandler I've got this whole website on Sandler and all these mega MP3s are on there. This is this is where you amp your game up, where your closing rate goes to like 80%. Like some of y'all are just closing 50% or less. This is how you get it to 80% is this stuff, if you study the Sandler stuff, okay? So she's sitting like this and, you know, her lips poked out and she's not looking at you, right? So here's what I do. I go, hey, Joan Mary, can I call a timeout? Can I call a timeout, please? Okay, that's called a pattern interrupt. You interrupt the whole thing because they're not, she's not engaging. He's all about it, right? And so I say, Mary, can I call a timeout? Uh, yeah. Okay. It's, it's a weird thing to say. It's called pattern interrupt. And so you... You ask her, I'm getting the feeling that you're really upset at me for some reason. And I really don't know why. Um, what did I do to make you so mad? Okay. Pattern interrupt. The non-confrontational. Like confrontational is you're mad at me for some reason. That's confrontational. Non-confrontational is I'm getting the feeling that. Right, you're just talking about how you feel, so that's not confrontational. Do you understand that it's an important difference? It's an important distinction. I'm getting the feeling that you're mad at me for some reason, and I'm not sure why. You fall on your sword. You assume that it's you. Okay, so pattern interrupt. Can I call time out? I'm getting the feeling that I said something that make you angry at me, and. I, I don't know why. What did I say? Fall on your sword. Then shut up. I don't care if you're staring at her for five minutes. You don't say another word, right? Silence is the most important closing technique that you could ever use. So you just shut up and let her answer the question. And you're smiling. And you just wait for her to answer the question. And then when she finally, here's typically when this has happened to me. Well, I did not know you were coming over. I had these things I had to do today, tonight. And all of a sudden you show up and he did not tell me you're coming over. And so I, I'm just, you know, really kind of upset me. Oh, 
Joe, did you really do that? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, Mary, I do the same thing to my wife. I mean, I'm so excited about doing doing something, and then I forget to tell her about it. And Yeah. Well, let me tell you why I'm here. Okay. Joe loves you and your kids. Okay, now by this time I found out the kids' names. Joe loves you, Sammy, Mary, and Martha. Okay. All in the Bible. <laughs> Samson. Sam, Mary, and Martha, that he loves you so much. Right. And he wanted to make sure that when he dies, that you will have enough money and not be any financially burdened to be able to take care of the funeral, all the final expense, everything that goes with him passing away. And really, we're here because he loves you that much that he wants to take care of you, Sammy, Martha, and Mary. All right, is that is that okay? Now, look, when you couch it like that, she's got to be like the ice queen if that doesn't melt her heart a little bit. Okay. By the way, how long have you guys been married? See where I'm going with this? Oh, well, I'm asking her this. Now, here's the thing. Your eye contact should be 50-50 between her and him. Never, ever let her think that you are thinking more about him than her, like thinking that he's the one who makes decisions. Because you know, and I know, she makes the majority of the decisions, right? So you honor her, if it's anything, 60-40 her, okay? <coughs> By the way, if you're a female, you have the wife sit close to you and the husband sits over there, okay? Do you understand that male-female dynamic? Well, Alex, I don't know what gender they are, okay? Never happened when I was selling. There was no question. You know, now if they're a homosexual couple, then, you know, you just find out who's the dominant person and you figure out that, that is a person that you need to focus on, okay? Anyway, the bottom line is your eye contact has to be totally, like, equal, if not more, on her part, okay? I know I'm being, what, um, stereotypical, but... The reason why I had a high closing rate is because I was being stereotypical. You know what I'm saying? Um, you can shoot me. You can cancel me. I don't care. My results speak for themselves. So, um, okay, so that's how you kind of get out of the situation. Okay, you got the good juju going on, right? So that is Bon Rapport. You need to know the names of their kids. Oh, wow. I see you got your kids. How many kids do you have? Oh, we have three. Oh, that's awesome. How old are they? Um, well, Sammy is is 10. Um, Martha is uh seven, and Mary is five. Wow, man, that's a that's a nice spread. Those are great names. Are they named after any particular relative? Or how do you come up with the names of your children? Oh, well, Sammy is it's his name's Samson. And we always love that name, Samson. It's my grandfather's name. Oh, wow, that's so cool. Samson's a great name. Kind of like the Bible, right? Oh, yeah, all our kids are named. Okay, so now if I find out they're Christian, it's like, oh, man. Oh, I got my hooks in them now. Okay, now if they're Muslim or Hindu, I'll still, you know, I'm not going to bring up biblical references. Come on, man. Seriously? You know, be smart. But I want to know their kids. Oh, man, so tell me, what does Sammy like to do? Is he like in sports or, well, he's really in gymnastics, actually. No kidding. My my nephews are into gymnastics. What level What level is he? he he's a level three. Whoa, no kidding. That's cool. My, my um, nephews are level threes. Okay, so if you know anything about gymnastics, it's all done by levels. Whether it's male, female, they have to qualify. It's like belts and karate. Kind of cool way that they do it so now you start talking their language like i know you may not have any clue about gymnastics i just happen to right so you're drawing bridges so how about martha what does she like to do oh she just loves to play video games no kidding at seven years old what's her favorite video game i don't know anything about video games i was like yeah but we try to keep her time like you know oh awesome and then how about Mary? What what she like to do? 
Well, we're still trying to figure it out. She she seems to like playing with balls and bats. She like hits her siblings with the bat. Okay, now you're getting to know the kids. So, so never refer to, so tell me, what is your family going to think about if you don't get this taken care of? No, man, name their family. The sweetest sound to a person is their name. And the second sweetest sound is their wife and children, right? And so you use their name and everything you do. So, so Joe, tell me about this. So Mary, uh, I know Mary and Mary, Mary's the mother, Mary's the dog. I know. Use their names all the time. Their names show that you care enough. And even if you have to write it down, guess what? They sh it shows that you care enough to write their names down so you could refer to it. To me, it's like, wow, this guy's making an effort to get to know my kids, right? Now, again, this is five, 10 minutes, but it takes as long as it needs to take so you get that good feeling that this is going on. Don't just, see, this is the advantage of having face-to-face -face appointments is you can <coughs> knock out the bond report harder on the phone, harder on the phone. Stiff. That's just the fact, right? You have to go through way more people to get that going. But when you're with them, man, you can overcome anything. Okay, so upfront contract. So you go from there. Hey, I know, I'm just, I'm not going to play the video. I'm just going to tell you. So you got the bond rapport rocking. If you just learn that, okay, then I could go into IQs and all kinds of stuff. But that's how you start an appointment. So now you do the upfront contract, which is making them feel like they're in control. So Joe Mary, listen, you know, I'm not gonna be here very long. I just wanna make sure that we do this properly so I can serve you and make sure the things that you care about are taken care of, the reason why you sent this in, et cetera. Look, I'm gonna ask you a bunch of questions so I get to know you and <laughs> what you're looking for. But at any time you feel like this isn't going the way that you want it to go, that you, you know, you are totally in control. You can ask me to leave and I'll be, I'll shake your hand and I'll leave. Okay. I, I just want you to know that it's okay to tell me that this is not for you and that you can end it anytime. Is that cool? You guys good with that? How long did that take? 30 seconds, a minute? Doesn't take very long. But here's what you're telling them. You're in control. You can tell me to leave. Now, how many salespeople tell their clients that? Like no one does. Right. No one tells them they're in control because the salesperson thinks they got to be in control. Well, you tell them they're in control. But guess what? You're asking the questions. So you're in control. So bond report, upfront contract only takes about a minute or two. Pain finding. The reason why people don't close a sale beyond, OK, let, beyond the client being a knucklehead, beyond the client just not caring about enough about their family, you can't make a client care about their family. And so, and that's about 20% of the people you sit down with. I don't care if you're the top of making wood, you're not gonna close them. And if you do, that's a chargeback. So 20%, you're not supposed to close. Okay, now we're talking about the people that you are supposed to close. The reason why you don't close them, the reason why you close half, that 30% you're missing, is because you don't do bond rapport well enough and you don't do pain finding well enough. Those are the two phases in the sales process that you can make a 30% difference in your close rate if you get good at those two. So that's why I say somewhere in the video that I say, I say that is if you want to get good at close and get good at bond rapport, get good at pain finding. Study that. Do everything you can. Watch all my videos on pain finding right, and bond report. In fact, majority of my videos are weighted towards that because I know the majority of reason why people don't close is because of those two sections. So pain finding, very simple. So Joe, did you fill out this form or did Mary fill it out? <coughs> Find out who filled it out because the person that filled it out is the one that I want to start the pain finding process with. So Mary says, well, it was me. Thank God, Mary filled it out. It's harder, not harder, but it's different when the guy, but it, Mary filled it out. Oh, okay, Mary, that's cool. Well, tell me, take me back to when you filled this out. Were you out here at the table? 
Why do I why do I want to take them back? Here's why you want to take them back, excuse me. Oh. My nose is running and before Ginny throws a a tissue at me. The the mother. Yeah. Okay, I don't and I don't have any nose hairs sticking out, do I? Okay, good. All right. So pain finding. So take me back, Mary, when you filled this out. Were you like, you got in the mail, right? Yeah. Yeah, I got in the mail. Do you like open up your mail right, right here at the table? Oh, yeah, yeah. So take me. What were you thinking when you were writing down all this information? In fact, here's a copy of the lead. I, sorry. You don't call a lead. It's a lead to you. But for them, this request for coverage form, you and I, I put it in front of her, I go, in front of them, and I go, so what were you thinking when you fill this out? You put your age and, you know, et cetera. What was going through your mind? And then you just shut up and let them ask the question. Well, so pain finding starts with logic. The logical reason. Well, you know, we know we kind of need this. Okay, they use those kind of wishy-washy words, kind of. Well, we know we kind of need to take care of this and, we were just really wondering how much it cost. Okay, so paint finding is a funnel. You start paint finding up here where it's logical, but then it you narrow it down to where it's emotional, right? People buy an emotion, they justify it with logic. And what they're first gonna throw out to you is a logical reason. And typically the reason, why don't we just wonder how much it costs and we wonder if we could afford it. Oh, perfect, perfect. In fact, we're gonna get there but let me ask you again, what was the reason that you filled this out? Now, see, you're asking the same question, but now they got to give you a deeper answer. Well, you know, we, it, you know, if my husband died, oh, Joe, if Joe died, then it's going to be kind of tough to come up with the money. Oh, okay. So tell me about that. The best pain finding question is tell me more about that. It's not slick. It's not complex. Well, tell me more about that. That's one of the simplest pain questions. Well, tell me more about that. Well, you know, with the cost of funerals these days, it's just, it would be really tough to come up with the money. Okay, so, so what do you mean by tough? Again, a simple question. Well, what do you mean by tough? Well, you know, it's expensive. Okay, do you, so what are you thinking? What does expensive mean to you? Do, you? do you see what I'm doing? I'm having them define the words they're using because I don't understand. In your mind, the worst salesperson is the one that assumes they know what expensive means to the client. They know what hard means for the client. It's like, oh, so you're the god of defining words, huh? Well, how's that working out for you? Why is your closing rate 30% then if you're the god of defining words? If you're not the god of defining words, you got to understand what those words mean to them. In other words, you're empathetic. You want to know what hard means for them. You want to know what expensive means. For them. Okay, so this is where you really start drilling down. So now, have you looked at or have you experienced running... Um, looking into funerals for someone? Do you know how much it costs? Well, you know, when my parents died, this is about 10 years ago, my mom died 10 years ago. It was probably around $10,000 or more, like maybe more like 15,000 10 years ago. Wow. Do you know what it costs today? Um, I don't. Well, if it was 10 years ago, it was 15,000. You're probably easily 20, 25,000, easily. So knowing that, how hard would it be when Joe dies? Don't say if, never use the word if. When Joe dies, Mary, how are you going to raise the money? Let's Okay, so let me give you a scenario. You tell me you want to think about it tonight. Don't take, you don't do it. I walk out of here. 
you're not covered. And then Joe has a heart attack tomorrow and he dies, right? Let, let me let me ask you a question. Do you know anyone that's had a heart attack? Everyone knows someone who's had a heart attack and died. So, yeah, my uncle, my uncle, in fact, just died last month of a heart attack. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. What's what's your uncle's name? Again, the name. No, his name's Henry. So, Mary, and you're nurturing, you're kind, you're nurturing. So, Mary, um, when he woke up that morning, because most heart attacks are in the morning, okay? When he woke up that morning, did he have any inkling that he'd die that day? You shut up. Don't say another word. And she's thinking, no, probably didn't. Okay. Well, let's bring it back to you and you and Joe, Mary. So let's say you want to think about it. You want to do anything tonight. Tomorrow, Joe dies of a heart attack. Besides the grief, how are you going to come up with the money to pay for a $20,000 funeral? Then you just shut the heck up. Don't say another word. And I don't care if you're staring at them for 10 minutes till they're trying to come up with an answer. And I'm wrecking this at the person that has the pain, the person that filled out the form. Uh, I don't know. And then I try to, I bail her out a little bit. I go, well, you know, you can, you know, do a GoFundMe page. I mean, most families that can't afford it, they suffer the embarrassment of having to beg for money from their family and friends. Have you ever seen any of your family and friends or that you know that had to do a GoFundMe? Oh, yeah. yeah it's kind of embarrassing, isn't it? Because it kind of just shows their lack of planning. And it really shows, you know, the husband who died his lack of care for his family to have to put him through the financial burden and the embarrassment of having to ask for money on a GoFundMe. I mean, is that, is that how you feel about that? What did I just do? Now you might think this is manipulation. No, I'm asking them hard questions in a nice and nurturing way. Right. And then it's like, oh, yeah, it's like, Man, man. So we'd have to probably do that. Now you do negative reversing. So this is some of the some some of the more like slick, slick, slick sales technique. You do negative reversing. It's like, well, I'm I'm sure you have enough in savings, twenty five thousand in savings to probably pay for it in cash, right? You just shut up. It's like, well, we don't. Well, maybe you, can you borrow the money out of his? I'm sure you could borrow the money out of his retirement account. You know, twenty five thousand out of his four hundred one k. You probably get a loan. Okay, all, all y'all are thinking I'm trying to talk him out of it. That's right, I'm trying to talk him out of it because it's called this pendulum. And the more I try to talk him out of it, the more they try to justify why they need it. Now, is that a typical salesperson? No, a salesperson tries to pull them to making a decision to buy it. We're different. The Sandler sales system is different. It's like, well, you could probably pay for this. You don't sound like a salesperson. You don't sound like a slimy, like the other five agents that were in their house is trying to convince them to buy. You're trying to convince them not to buy. And then they try to justify, well, they're going to want to do it. It's crazy. I'll, I'll teach that sometime. It's called the pendulum technique. You negative reverse them. And then <coughs> and then the magic question is, Joe, how does that make you feel knowing that Mary and S Mary's going to have to go through that and your kids, um, Sammy, Martha, and Mary are going to have to go through that whole financial thing of trying to come up with the money to pay for your funeral? How does that make you feel? Then you shut the heck up and you wait for him to be the hero. You give it, you were setting him up to be the hero of his family, aren't you? You know, and you're looking at Joe's like, man, 
well, that's not going to happen to my family. We really need to do this. And that's why you're here. Oh, okay. But I just want to make sure, you know, this is something that y'all want to do. Yeah, you know, I'm not trying to talk you into this. I'm just trying to present to you my questions. So it's up to you. You know, do you want me to continue on? That's a bold ass question. I'm sorry. That's a bold question. But if you know this techniques, you can ask that question. Do I have permission to move forward with this? Or, you know, you guys really not. Remember, you're in control. <laughs> now you have them eating out of your hand. It's like they want to get this thing done like, you know, an hour ago when you showed, not when, you know, an hour ago before you showed up. It's slick. It is awesome. Now you know this is done. This is a done deal. So now you go bond report to transition to um, the budget and the pain process and the um, decision process. So it sounds to me like this is something you really want to do. So let me ask you a question. I know that you have a budget. We all have a budget and you want to be able to afford this. And I want you to be able to afford it too. So I'm going to lay out after the end of this process, I'm going to lay out some premium options for you. I just want you to promise me that if it's too expensive, you let me know because I want to make sure this fits in your budget. Because look, if you can't afford it, it doesn't make sense, right? If you can't afford it next month, next year, 30 years from now, then it doesn't make sense if I can't get in your budget. And I'm pretty good at getting in people's budget, okay? You've got a lot of options. I just want to make sure that you know that I'm going to do my best to make sure. Now, I want you to tell me if it's too expensive or if you can afford more coverage. So don't be afraid. Are, are you okay with that? Get their permission. Boom. You got the budget thing down. Now the decision process. This is where you get rid of the think about it. This is where you no longer ever, 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 ever get to think about it with the right client. Again, 80% of the people you sit down with. So is it okay if I explain to you kind of how this process works? Yeah, sure. Again, you're asking permission. Okay, so this is a decision. So you went from bond rapport, upfront contract, pain finding, budget, now the decision. And this is, you know, if you're kind of doing this on average, you're probably 20, 25 minutes into it, okay? So the decision process. So let me tell you what's gonna happen. I'm gonna ask you a bunch of health questions. I'm gonna to get to know you a little bit more from an underwriting perspective, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the best product for you. We've got a bunch of companies. I'm gonna find the best product for you. And then I'm gonna calculate three different rates. You know, low, medium, and high. And again, like I said, you tell me if the, those don't work, I'm going to find something that will. Okay. I just need to know more about your health so I can be very accurate as far as my quotes. Now, you're going to pick the one that you feel comfortable with budget wise. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to fill out a request for coverage form online. Okay. Because everything's online now. And then we're going to um, submit it to the insurance company. And actually, the cool thing about it is when we submit the application, you're actually covered tonight. So if anything should happen, like tomorrow, Joe dies of a heart attack, we can submit a death claim. Is that cool? You know, talking about Joe dying, not cool, but you know what I'm saying, right? So um, so we're going to submit it. Now, look, they're going to think about you. There's nothing to think about tonight because we don't even know if you're even qualifying for this. The only time you can really think about it is once we know that you're qualified. So all we're really doing is going through the process of learning about your health, um, come up with three premium options. You pick the best one for you. We're going to submit an application, right? And they're going to draft the first month premium um, just, you know, because it's called, it, that's how you're covered tonight, but it's refundable. So if you decide this isn't for you, whatever, you know, then you get your money back, but it conditionally covers you. And then it binds the company to do the underwriting, okay? So you're gonna get a decision. So they're gonna think about you. And if they decide that you qualify for this, they're gonna assemble the policy. They're gonna send it back to you, the policy to you. And then that's when you give me a call and say, Alex, the policy's issued. 
It's right here. And I'm going to say, awesome. I'm going to let's set up a time where I can go over. It takes 10 minutes. Let's open it up and let's go over it. And then at that point, you can tell me that you want more coverage, less coverage, or you want to keep it as is. Okay. Don't tell them they, they can reject it. You just tell them that's when we can talk about it. And that's where you get a chance to think about if you need more coverage, less coverage, or keep it as, as it is. Is that cool? So there's no thinking about it tonight. All we're doing is finding a comfortable budget thing for you. And then we're going to determine, you know, so are you cool with that? No, think about it tonight. And then you shut up and let them say, yeah, that sounds good. Boom. It's done. It was done at Bond Report. But now it's really done because you covered the decision process and you just nailed the decision process. Now the rest of stuff is monkey stuff. Ask them health questions, the health intake form. Then you go to the calculate the premium rates, right? And then you give them three premium options. They pick one, you fill out the electronic application. Boom, 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 boom. When it gets to the beneficiary of the electronic application, this is when you do the ERS referral system, which we talked about on Monday, okay? You know, but if you're not ready for that yet, I'll give you two weeks before you have to implement it. But you do it at the beneficiary. Okay. After all is said and done, you've got the fulfillment done. By the way, bond rapport is going on because there's going to be dead spots where you're trying to calculate rates. This it, and then you ask them more questions. So how long have y'all lived here? And you're calculating rates. Oh, 10 years? Wow, that's a long time. Where you where'd you live before? Calculating rates. Well, I was in the Air Force and I was stationed at in California. Really? Wow. My parents live in California. You're calculating rate. You're keeping a conversation going. It's bond rapport all throughout the thing, right? Okay, then you do the electronic application. Now you get to the post sale. Okay, and this is where you lock the sale down. <coughs> so the and I'm going to be a little bit brief because we're already at 931. So the post sale is all about, now, Joe Mary, listen. Now that we're going to submit this, here's what I want to make sure. Okay, you chose the $149 a month policy. Now, look, I just want to make sure you can afford that. Is $149, does that fit in your budget? Okay, if the insurance company approves it. Now, look, the insurance company can decline it. In fact, that's part of your decision process. you got to say, now, if the insurance company declines it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you know, and then I'm going to come back over here and we'll go over some other options that I believe we can get you covered with. Okay. Fair, fair. No think about it tonight. Is that cool? Yes. Okay. Okay. Going back to post sale. So I want to know if this $449 will that fit in your budget. Now, this is you bring up two scenarios. This scenario, and it's like you're talking them out of it, because you are kind of talking them out of it. So let me ask you $149. I'm sure it's summertime, you're going to have vacation plans, right? And you're going to, you know, if you're like me, maybe spend a little bit more money you're planning on. And then at the beginning of the month, you see this 149 is going to be drafted out of your account. Are you going to call me and tell me that you want to cancel because $149 is too much? You shut up, right? So you, you do, because it's summertime, use a summer example. If it's in fall... Go you know, now. Christmas is coming, and you know how it is. We sometimes we're a little bit over generous, and all the bills come in in January. Now that January drafting of your premium, hundred forty nine dollars, you know it's going to come out first of the month, fifth of the month, whatever you guys choose. Are you going to call me then and tell me it's too much? And then you shut up. Here's the clue: if there's any hesitation. Any hesitation where they're just kind of pondering, make the assumption that 149 is too expensive. Okay. So this is where you do the I get the feeling. It's like call timeout, say, hey, Joe and Mary, can I call timeout? Uh yeah. I'm getting the feeling that $149 might be pushing your budget too much. You know, I I I may have misread the situation. You know, option one, 
was $98 a month, it still got you enough to do all the basics that you needed for your funeral, but at least it gets you a, a, a majority of the way there. Is $98 better for your budget than 149 And then you shut up and then you let them decide. Typically what will happen, there'll be two ways. The first way you know you did the right thing is to go, oh, you know what? They they breathe a sigh of relief. You took the pressure off them. You say, you know, Alex, $98 is, that's going to be much better. Perfect. I just want to make sure before I hit submit, okay, hit the submit button. button. We can dial it back. So instead of $25,000, let us bring it down to $15,000. We'll get it to $98. Do you feel better about that, Mary? Mary, is that cool? Okay. You get buy-in from both of them. Yeah, 98 been perfect. That's how you know you did the right thing. Or they're going to justify and sell you while they can afford 149 You know, it's like, oh, yeah, we can do 149 I want 25000 and make sure everything's taken care of. It's like, okay, I just want to make sure. Okay. So you, you nail that part down. Then what you do is, now look, I know that both of you are going to have questions over the next couple of days. So what I want you to do, here's my card. Now I want you to write on a separate piece of paper the next couple of days, any questions you have for me. Because I promise you, I'm going to call you in a couple of days and I'm going to um, find out if you have any questions. Is that cool? It's called the callback. Okay. So another point of trust where they trust you more is you follow through on your promise. So you call them back two days later, say, Hey, Joe, Mary, how you doing this? Alex, I just, Hey, you have any questions for me? Now, why do you do this? You're doing this to find buyer's remorse and you have a chance within 24, 48 hours when you call them back to save the policy. Cause when you call them back and say, Hey, do you have any questions for me? And they might have questions like, hey, I just want to make sure, like, we chose the fifth of the month. So that's going to happen the fifth of the month. Like, if it's on a weekend, is it going to be Friday or Monday? Oh, it'll be Monday. Oh, okay, I just want to make sure. Will the price ever go up? No, the price always stays the same. Whatever. They're going to have questions, and then that's what you're there to do. But what you're looking for is, hey, Joe Mary, how you doing? It's Alex. Like, I promise I call you back. Do you have any questions? Then you have kind of a pause. And then, well, Mary and I have been talking about it. And, ah, you know, say no more. Sounds to me like maybe it was that 149 was pushing a little bit. You know, I was getting the feeling, too, when I left that that was maybe a little bit on the upper end. You know, why don't we do this? My last appointment will probably be over at 7 p.m. Let me shoot on over about 730, and then we can talk about it, see if we can – Get it, get it in a better budget for you. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah, come on over. See, within one or two days, you have a chance to save the policy. But when you call back in a week or two, and say, hey, Joe and Mary, did you get your policy yet? Well, Mary and I decided we didn't want it. So we can't afford it. We can't. Well, I can come over. No, no, just can you cancel it, please? You don't have a chance because they spent two weeks See, they, they were feeling bothers and more than 24, 48 hours, but they had a whole two weeks to solidify the decision that they can't afford it. We can't do it now. Or I got plenty of insurance at work or whatever excuse they're going to come up with. That's why you have to do it. It's called placement of persistency. You don't want to spend all this time booking time over there, going through the whole Sandler sales process, bond report, upfront contract, pain finding, um, Budget, decision, fulfillment, post-sale, only to find out all this time you spent was wasted. You got to do the callback, <laughs> right? So you did that to you. And so, and, okay, so that's the basics. There's there's five, three other things. I'm not going to go over it. I mean, you know, it's in my training, okay? Okay, so to, to answer your question, you go through the ATM, and you match it up with bond rapport, upfront contract, pain finding, budget, decision, fulfillment, post-sell. Like, 
Mary, you went anal and you studied my three hour, like I do it in three, like, was it three hours, Mary? It was about three hours. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I went, I took a whole Saturday, three hours going, what I just did in the last hour or more, I take three hours to do it. Now, here's where I challenge you. Like the, the reason why I did the short version on the website was just to get you oriented to it. But look, if you want to be a professional in this thing, you got to spend the time, man. You cannot just half-ass it and like, oh, well, I'll just go in there and I'll just come talk to them. If they really want it, then I was like, oh, seriously? You're, you're here to be a professional. Do you want to make money doing this? If you want to make money sooner than later, then you got to study your craft, man. you got to be a total professional. Do you think Kobe Bryant just sort of played basketball on his talent? You know, that dude was the hardest working player in the NBA. Because he knew that if he wasn't going to be working, someone else was going to be out working him. He would not out. He would outwork anybody else. That was his commitment. Every day he worked out. And I know Mary does it. She still watches videos. Like I've been telling people on coaching calls, it's interesting when you watch a video, you only can learn only so much from it. Then you get a little experience out in the field. You watch the video again. Things are going to speak to you that you needed, right? Yeah, we already talked about that. Oh. If you need help and appointment, you call me, Joy, if Mary's available. We're going to help you. Okay, so if you run into any, call us. I don't care if you call me 10 times with a client. We're going to help you close the client, take care of them, all right? But that's the reason why I have, seems like, I'll, actually, I have like what? There's a point where I had 800 videos on YouTube. I had to pare it down. Now I think it's only like 400 450, something like that. But there was a time where I had 800, literally 800 videos on YouTube. Everyone could learn my stuff. But the Sandler stuff. So I'm not going to take credit for it. So to, to answer your question, Nikki, you follow the process. The process will always take care of you. And remember, the process is about finding the client that's worth your time. You got to be bold enough to stand up and walk out. Like, for example... Husband and wife still kind of bickering and, well, I just don't have time to do this. Oh, okay. I'll tell you what. Why don't we just rebook rebook on the calendar because if it's, you know, if you're not like on board together, then let's find another time to do it. You know, if you decide to be on board, then give me a call. Like, I'm walking out of there, man. I'm not going to try to convince them. You know, a person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. So you got to know when to fold them. Oh, you got to know when to hold it, just like the song, right? Um, so, Nikki, you use the ATM. The ATM will be your guide, and that is implementing the bond rapport, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, it's all in. You know, it's all in the video. But this was good to go over this because I think, like most of y'all. Probably don't have a clue right most of y'all especially that first part i haven't taught those finer points of bond report in age i have probably some videos on it mary have you heard some of this stuff on the bond report i heard some of it um i i do take my shoes off before i come into every person's home regardless if they tell me to or not just because it makes them feel like i'm part of the family um plus that way i can put my feet up on the, the chair underneath my legs and stuff it just makes it seem more homey and also the water, I remembered the water one, um, but there was other ones that you went over today that I didn't do yet. And I can't wait to do them this weekend. Yeah. See, even if you've been selling it a couple thousand a, a week, uh, three hours and 41 minutes sales boot camp. You know, what's really interesting that three hours and 41 minutes, I went into detail on all seven steps of the sales process. Um, it flew by for me anyway, man. It was like straight through, right? I mean, I didn't take any breaks. I don't think there's a cut in the video. And I, I do that for all the different important parts of the sales process. So I think it's what, Mary, in advanced training? Yes, it is an advanced training. The uh, booking of boot camp, the ERS, all of the boot camps are in the advanced training. Yeah, you get to be knowledgeable about all that stuff. You're going to make Two three hundred thousand a year. Like I promise you, you'll make two three hundred thousand a year. 
know, if Mary was working full time, I shouldn't say this. I'm not going to say. <laughs> it. Anyway, you're rocking though, so I appreciate you taking away Thank all you. the excuses of all the new people, um, because you're you're like kind of little OCD like me, and you just really want to prepare yourself, and you're treating this like a bit real business, right? So appreciate that. All right, gang, I got dinner to eat because I've not eaten yet. So um, break, Nikki, thank you for asking that question. I appreciate you asking that question. I no think, problem. Thank you. I think it's going to help a whole bunch of people on this call. And um, I'll get this video out to everybody. Rock on. God bless everybody. See you.